She just took flight. She took her look, and that's exactly what you did. She made her looking good. That's beautiful. How you doing? I'm good. How are you feeling today? I'm doing really, I'm feeling really good. I'm, I am so excited about this. Yes, I am so excited. Yes. Yes. Wow. I am. Yes, I am. I see you both, and obviously, you know, we got to know each other a little bit, and it's just like, God is doing something. He really is. He, he is. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. I said that. So on the show today, I wanted to have an honest conversation because okay. he's also a pastor. And, oh, this is Pastor St. Gilstrap. Nice to meet you. She's an evangelist. She mm -hmm. travels the country, impacting okay. lives and, and preaching the word, you know. And I want to be the, the ball. show. <laughs> I want to be on the show because I know there's a lot of stuff that she and I are to in total alignment with, but I also want her on the show because there's also some things... Um, I, I believe that I talk about with the LGBTQ community that I'm very liberal on, that she may not necessarily be as a liberal on, so I thought that would be a good chance for us to talk and um, just being able to, you know, use our gift to impact people. So I wanted to talk about that and then also talk about how, you know, as followers of Christ that, you know, life ain't always pretty and the exactly. stuff that we go through and to be exactly. able to be real. Yeah. Yeah. So that we can show Jesus working out exactly. our lives, you know, because I think exactly. people get it twisted. They're like, oh, once you follow Christ, it's beautiful. It's it's beautiful. It's it's beautiful. It's perfect. And yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, and it don't. No. And flowers and, you know, yeah, flowers, okay. exactly, yeah. you know, and it ain't like that. But but through our faith in him and through right. his work in our life, we're able to overcome those exactly. things. And that's what people don't talk about. Yeah. And so that's the head, you know, masturbated up, right. down. I mean, just... And so it's like, what's the benefits of being a Christ follower? That's right. If that's what... So, in the same sense, what y'all were just saying, you know, it's not easy. Mm -mm. You know, It's but, not easy at all. Mm -hmm. And actually, and me and one of my good friends were talking, but even as you say, I'm taking on this title, major yeah. responsibility, but you become the number one target for the enemy. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's oh, yeah. Love in the world. Uh -huh. As long as I right. was loving, partying, drinking, smoking, having mm -hmm. my own time, right. I didn't have a problem. Right. You... But as soon as I took on that title yep. on my name, it was just I, I'm, yep. a, I'm, red, I'm a red target everywhere I go. Right. So it don't matter if you're in the United States or if you're in another country, the enemy knows you all over the world. The enemy knows you. And yeah. like, if he's not messing with you, that means you ain't believe you ain't doing it. You ain't doing it. I also flip the script on the on the enemy because in my mind. Sometimes it's like training wheels. You say oh, yeah. you're gonna do something, yeah. and so God might be like, "Okay, let me give you some muscles. Right. Like, let me, you know, let, let's, yeah. let's get some muscles. Yeah. Muscles worked out." But understand this too, just like a video game. When you move to the next level, your enemy gets stronger. It gets yes, you know, yeah. You that's right. Every level get more powerful. Right. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. Hello and welcome to Donnie Jones Live. I am your host, Donnie Jones, and we have an amazing show today. See, I didn't use the word exciting because I always use that word. I'm saying amazing because the woman that we have on the show today is amazing. She's a woman of God. She's doing great things. She's making a difference and she is making moves that many of us wish we could make. But she's also a woman that has transcended her own story. And I wanted to introduce her to you guys. I am talking about none other than Scent Gill Strap. <laughs> How are you? Doing? I'm well. I'm well. I didn't, it was so funny because I know you're an evangelist, which is one of the other reasons why I wanted to have you on the show. But I didn't know if I should call you Evangelist Scent Gill Strap, <laughs> Pastor Scent Gill Strap, Reverend Scent Gill Strap. But what do you prefer to be called, Scent? Actually, my um, title is Apostle. Okay, Apostle. But it doesn't matter because I'm still Scent. I love it. I'm still sent. I love it. Whether you call me sister or whether you use my title, I'm still sent. That's right. <laughs> but see, that's what I love about you is that you are sent. And um, just a real quick history is we met through um, a relative of mine. Um, actually, my brother-in-law um, was dating your daughter. And um, that's how I got to know you. Right. And it's funny because we were in a group of people. Um, at your, her baby shower and you walked in the room and I was like, who is this powerhouse woman? Wow. Like you was running things and <laughs> asking people questions. You didn't like something that was in the corner and you was like, mm -mm. and I'm like, okay, who is she? I feel like, you know, I need to sit up straight and act right, you know? <laughs> but then when I really got to know you, I, I saw where your power comes. You know, your power comes from the fact that you've overcome and you're still here and that your love for God is real and it's, it's real. transparent. Yes. So tell us about it, because yes. I can talk about you yes. all day. 
But tell us. About you know, it's sense. it's amazing that you would say that because I don't see myself the way other people see me. Really? So you walking in the room and saying, who is this woman? And I'm looking like, who is this woman? Where is she? <laughs> because we just don't see ourselves in that element yeah. at all. But God has really done some wonderful things in my life. And I, it's true. I have yeah. gone through so many adversities, yeah. so many challenges. And even sitting here, I can think about a time where my mom had to rush me to the hospital and I don't tell this story a lot, yeah. but they literally was trying to figure out, you know, what's going on with right. my child. Yeah. But I was not, um, my system wasn't wasted. Yeah. So had she not got me there in time enough, I would have died. Wow. So that's just to let you know that I have gone through literally so many yeah. obstacles and challenges all my life and yet still, and standing. Yet still here. I so I it. Thank God for it. Wow. I do. I do. But you know, the other beautiful thing about your story is that you weren't all, and even now, you know, none of us are squeaky clean. Mm -hmm. But when I think of a pastor, I think of somebody, you know, they went to church, they got the call of God on their life. Right. Then they right. went to seminary. Right. Then right. they met the right person, right. got married, Mar started a church. Mm -mm. And, you know, mm -mm. then they built the church, then mm -mm. it got bigger, and then they own TV, <laughs> and then people know them, and then they write a book. That is not your story. That is not my story. <laughs> Actually, I did not grow up in church. Yeah. Um, we, of course, recognize Easter, Mother's right. Day, Father's like we all Day. Do. Yeah. Like we all do. Yeah. So those were my holidays. Yeah. But to say that I'm reared in church, I was not reared in church. Yeah. I actually went through what you call the transformation of life. Mm. So I literally was a child. I was a child with issues, but I was a child. What were some of your issues? The issues that I have growing up when I was five years old, I was molested. Mm. And I was molested by a family member. Yeah. And so growing up, always having to hear here if you tell anybody I'll kill your mom yeah. that was tormenting for Absolutely. me so I found myself at five years old having to be the protector and yet go through everything that I was going through that was humiliating for yeah. me as a child Absolutely. and then try to maintain trying to be a child still mm -hmm. how do you balance that at five, five or six, at five years, or six years old, old. Yeah. so I had to be mature at five and six yeah. and not and and cover myself protect yeah. my mom and let yeah. no one know let at the same time what was going on and i at 12 13 14 i'm in high school right so i'm dating someone now older than me right right thinking that he loved me mm. only to find myself in an abusive relationship yeah i can recall so many instances where he and i was fighting one day you know it was a gift the next day yep. we're back together so it was just a vicious cycle and that's what but it is it's, it's a it's cycle so vicious that's what my dad used to yeah. do with my mom yeah i'm like i couldn't stay with a man for 30 years it was always you. it was always a gift her. Mm -hmm. And then he'll bring home some. Yes, ma'am. He'll bring home some groceries. Yep. Yep. And she'll mm -hmm. fix it or he'll take her out or yes, something like that. Yes, ma'am. But then the next day he's doing something crazy again. Next day. And she stayed in it. Yeah. And it was actually him that left, not her. Yeah. That's what's sick about mm. it. You know, and now he's in his 80s and all is good, you know, right. meaning that there, I don't have any ill will. Right. You know, that there, those a lot of those relationships are healed. But at the same token, we took too much of what we learned being being forgiven right. and staying in it. Right. You, you forgive, but right. you don't stay in right. it. Right. You move on. You know, the Bible might say 70, forgive 70, 70 times, times 70, 70. Right. But it doesn't say stay, stay in a in toxic it. relationship. That's right. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that even today stay in toxic relationships yeah. because they feel maybe they're getting older. Yeah. And some people I found out just over the years of being a minister that a lot of women feel like if you uh, whip me or beat me you love me mm -hmm. based on the fact that growing you up as mad kids enough to care about me. growing up as kids we literally got spankings for, yeah. and that was a form of discipline right right so a lot of people that have been hurt and wounded feel as though that they love me because i've heard my mom say you know i'm spanking you because i love yes. you. yes i'm beating I, I, on you and yeah. they took that yeah. on yes and yes. now they've in abuse abuse relationship right. with a person that does that and they think that that's, that that's love that's love that he loves me he and wouldn't he do don't. it if he and he really he's don't. mentally ill he's mentally ill yes. and you know my my statement was this 
I actually approached the assailant, the person who did it to me. Yeah. And I said to that person, I said, you know what? I said, I forgive you for what you did to me. Yeah. I said, but somewhere in your life, someone did it. Somebody to you. did it. To Somebody you. did it to you. That's because right. how could you have this type of behavior yeah. Yeah. to someone you say that you love That's and right. supposed to protect, yeah. but yet abuse them in a drastic way in like drastic that? Way. So nevertheless, my um my um teenage years was it was crazy yeah. in and out of you know a lot of fights in and out of relationships i was very promiscuous i literally was doing things that i i mean i was already doing drugs yeah. i was already drinking because yeah. i was trying to find an exit and yeah. i just didn't know where it was so what was the turning point for you the turning point was when i was literally 20 21 years old and uh, me and my ex-boyfriend had been dating yeah. Prior to that, maybe like three weeks or so into the relation, three weeks before the relationship ended, he was really into, you know, drugs and yeah. alcohol. And, you know, back then he was one of the guys in the street, you yeah. know, doing his own thing. Yeah. So he still he then became a user of his own product. Mm. Yeah. And from that he had on, he took on addictive behaviors. Mm -hmm. And when they mixed together and merged, he became extremely violent yeah. and he was deadly. Yeah. So prior to us actually finally breaking up, what occurred was that. I was at the house one day and he chained me to the bed no. and I could not get away from the bed. Yeah. And the only time, and that's why I said I was date rate too, yeah. that he would unchain me literally with a handcuff. I was handcuffed to the bed mm. was to take me like uncuff me and have sex with me wow. and cuff me back mm. or to uncuff me and eat. I could not get yeah, away. Absolutely. And literally, I recall one day, and I'll never forget, I had on black and white polka dot panty set, and he ripped it off. And I said, if you touch me, you're raping me. Yeah. And uh, he snatched my clothes off, and he had his way with me. And yeah. I woke up, and I had all these different type of bruises on myself. And I told myself then, I said, if I get away, I'll never come back. Wow. And one day, it was raining outside, and my girlfriend, I called her, and I said, I can't take it anymore. She said, yeah. are you sure? Yeah. She said, what are you going to do? I, she said, I'm coming to get you. It don't you. matter what you I'm going. Uh -huh. I'm leaving. I told her, yeah. I said, I'm leaving. I can't do it anymore. Yeah. And I remember I had on a white cutoff T-shirt, blue jeans, shorts. My, they were unzipped, no shoes. And the last fight we had, I took off running. I met her at a library. She came to get yeah. me. I said, in the back of the library. And I said, I cannot go through this anymore. And it was raining outside. Wow. Let's keep in mind, I didn't have on a bra. Nothing. My, you, nothing. I just took off running. But and that's she deliverance. Came to get Believe me. it or not, I had that to. is a deliverance. I had to. I want to get into that. I had and to. I, and about your transition into ministry. Absolutely. So we're going to take a quick break right, Absolutely. right quick. Guys, we're sitting here talking with Sint Gilstrap. As you can see, she is a powerful woman <laughs> with a powerful story. We're going to take a break and we're going to get right back into it. And thank you so much for listening. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here talking with Sint Gilstrap. We are back talking about her powerful story of deliverance from the life that she was living. And she was just getting into it before the break. <laughs> so let's keep it moving with how you got delivered from the life you were living. And um, as I was stating earlier, you know, it was just a great transition, me getting away from him, um, taking that last initiative thought to say this yeah. is it. And I think during the time I was working like a part time job, I wasn't yeah. really working. And a lot of people stay in these relationships based yeah. on the fact of find some financial. Yeah, they need some financial. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they need financial. Girl, I'd rather be broke on the street. What? And I had myself. to realize that. Yeah, I had to realize yeah. that because I felt like I needed love. So all yeah. of this is based on me looking for love and yeah. needing that acceptance That's because right. of what I've been through. Who's going to protect me? Yeah. And I felt like this person was the one. So finally, my girlfriend came and got me at the library and I. I said, I'm not going back. She said, what are your plans? I said, I don't have a plan. Just take me with you to get me as far yeah. away from this place. So eventually I end up um, getting my own apartment and he and I had the same friends. So I said, whatever you all do, don't tell him where I'm right. at. So finally he found out where I was and he started calling me. He started giving me terroristic calls 
I was by myself. I was a single woman. Yeah. I still didn't know Christ. So I'm trying to figure out what am I going to do? The finale of it all was one night he had been binging three to five days, high drinking, snorting, smoking, all yeah. of these things, three to five days. And he told me, he said, I'm going to kill you. And if I cannot have you, no one can have you. I'm going to kill you. And as a single woman, I said, you know what? Let me call the police. Yeah. And back then we had the answer machines because this was in the uh, 90s. So we yeah. had the answer machine. You push the button. And I called 911. And when I called her, she said, it's something in your voice. Let me just send the police officer. I said, no, you don't have to send him. I said, because I feel like it's going to be OK. But just in case, I want to make sure if I need to, you know, hit dial it'll dial you all back right so she sent the officer anyway wow. and he said well i'm just coming over when he got there he said i'm just coming over to check on you and i was like okay fine well this time um, my ex-boyfriend was still calling me oh, and yeah. the officer said i'm calling for backup because this dude mean business he yeah. mean to kill you tonight yeah. so i said okay so he called back and you know it was just i'm gonna kill you you're gonna live i'm gonna take your breath i'm gonna take your life you'll never see daylight again oh it was back to back he would hang up call right back i would hang up he'll call right back and um the police officer said, let it play so as he called for backup it was like three or four police cars that showed up and they began to circle the area, the parameter where I live, because he wow. found out where I live. Yeah. He literally had started walking towards my apartment because his friends told him where I where was. I yeah. So he got literally about 10 feet away. He had a nine millimeter gun. Oh, my God. The bullet was already in the chamber. Wow. He had on all black, black hat, black gloves, black shirt, black jacket, black shoes, black pants. Everything right. was black. So I wouldn't have been able to identify. identify him. Yeah. But he literally was 10 feet away from my door mm. and the police stepped out and called him. Wow. And that was the final draw. I wow. could not do it. I said, yeah. literally. I knew that God had me. God had your back. And I had no idea that he had me. Wow. I had no idea. Mm. So I, how did you wind up getting into ministry? Um, so many things transpired. I have to keep in mind that I was, I, was, I went to college too. Yeah. And, you know, going to college, I found myself again in promiscuous situations, right. you know, doing so many things that I yeah. know that I had no You're business searching doing. For love, like you I said. was searching for love in all the wrong places. But this is what happened. Even in college, um, you know, going from this boyfriend and that boyfriend and this boyfriend and that boyfriend, I was standing in a party one day yeah. and I was in the midst. I was the limelight and highlight of the party. Always. My mom kept me, you know, well dressed. Yeah. I didn't have a problem, you know, yeah. wanting you always look sharp thing. even now. So. You know, I, it wasn't a problem because right. my dad was, you know, in the streets yeah. and then my mom, she really worked hard yeah. because her, her promise to herself was I'm going to always take care of my kids yeah. no matter what. So she yeah. worked two jobs to make sure the thing she didn't have that we would have right. so she gave us right. that so in college I was standing in a party I'll never forget it was a capital party all these people was just go sit go sit you know I'm just dancing and I realized that I'm in this place and dying inside mm. and no one knew wow. that I was literally dying that very night I, I was contemplating suicide while I was smiling on the outside mm. when but, I got isn't it that a lot of us though that is so many of us yeah I, I, we dress up ourselves, but we're, we're dressed up trash yeah. can. Yeah. And that night I literally took a bottle of pills and I did not tell anyone. Wow. I literally left the party and the entire time at the party, I'm thinking I'm gonna kill myself tonight. Mm. I'm talking about drinking, having fun on the outside, and but, go, but yet, knowing you're going to go But knowing home. I've already have a premeditated plan when I get back so to take myself out. So I would assume you wound up getting put in the hospital. When no, let me tell you what happened. So I got, first of all, the girl that took me back to, and this is amazing. The girl that gave me a ride back to my dorm room, she didn't even like me. She and I didn't even see eye to eye, but I was so out of it that yeah. she, I guess she felt um, sympathy for me and she yeah. gave me a ride yeah. but guess what had she not given me a ride I could have been date raped that night mm -hmm. because I was so out, out of it, it. Yeah. I was already in my mind had made a decision I'm going to kill myself wow. when I got back to my dorm room I took pills and I said okay it's over I put the um, pill bottle beside the bed 30 minutes later literally I just began to regurgitate mm. I began to regurgitate and yeah. I said you know what 
I said, God has something for he my life for you, yes. because too many things are happening. I'm trying to kill myself yes. and it's not working. You know, I remember going through so much stuff with the, the abuse, the date rape, the financial issues, yes. me having a father that was yes. physically abusive and stuff like that. I remember thinking I was like 19, 20 years old and I got away to college and started partying and stuff and, you know, fell on some hard times financially. And I just remember sitting in my car crying and I said, I know this much pain ain't just for me. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to use exactly. I didn't, at 19. I didn't know that you had no idea. For, exactly. But I knew I was exactly. like, that much pain. This is my story is not just exactly. for me. Now, it took me 30 more years to be. <laughs> I understand that, that though. But yeah, I understand that though. You know, the actual turning point was when I went to the doctor in 1993, 92, and they told me that you're pregnant. Mm. Everything stopped. All the smoking, all the drinking, uh, the abusive relationships, everything that I thought was stopped. But yeah. keep in mind, I'm going to roll back a little bit. In my apartment, I had a, my God sister gave me a scripture. She gave me Psalms 27 and I'll never forget. Mm -hmm. And she said, I need you to read this every night. And she knew that I had came out of the yeah. abusive relationship. Yeah. So during my transition of, of coming out of one thing, I was actually moving into another and I had yeah. no idea. So this scripture is what I held on to for yeah. strength, for hope, for my independence, for my courage. So I continue every day to read Psalms 27, 27. and it kept me. And that's the only scripture that I knew, but it kept me and it, it got me through. Well, all it takes and is one. <laughs> all it took is one. And then I met my daughter's father and yeah. I end up in 1992. I got pregnant and I had no idea I was moving from, you know, transitioning from one thing to another. But when I went to the doctor and, he said you and they said I was pregnant, I said, God, you gave me another opportunity yeah. and I stopped everything. Although I had a child out of wedlock, I wasn't yeah. married. Right. But that's when the turning but God point, still uses you. that's when the you turning know? point of my life for its Christianity that's and right. being a believer, that's when it changed. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. That's when it I'm telling you, the reason why I just, I have to share this story is because you're living proof of living what God says. Exactly. And I guess, you know, if anybody's read my posts and stuff, I have this thing right now where it's all about transparency. Right. I am so sick and tired of seeing people sit in church and not get delivered. Right. You know, I call it, I just mentioned it before in a previous interview, interview is biblical entertainment. Right. You know, you're being entertained and, and people are up there and they're hipping and hawing and stuff like that. People are not being delivered out of the situation exactly. they're in because they're not living what the word says. Exactly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they're not understanding that God can work in your life while you're a mess. Exactly. God has his hand on you while you're a mess. Yeah. And it ain't about you wearing the right clothes. That's right. It ain't about you looking a certain at way. all. It's at not all. about that. It's about you submitting to his will. Right. And so with that, I really call out a lot of stuff in church. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the thing I love about you is that. You use God's word every day in right. your life. Right. You're not just tap dancing right. with it. Right. How did you get to a point where when you got into ministry, you knew that for you, it wasn't about entertainment. It was about having an impact. Like, cause you could have went down that road oh, yeah. of, the, oh, of the TV people. Absolutely. You know, and I absolutely. want you to have that kind of exposure. Right. I want you to have the, 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 the big evangelistic ministry that's impacting people but not just entertainment. Right. And it seems like today there's really that entertainment ele element. How do you stay faithful to who you are, be transparent and not get caught up in the money game? The thing about me is that I did so many things young. We have to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. And I told God, if I'm going to give you my life, I'm going to give it to you just like I gave my life to Satan. Right. I'm going to give you everything that I have. Yeah. So to cover myself, my main focus is God keep me humble. Yeah. I don't care who I am or who I become or who you want me to be. Right. It's not predicated on based on the title of that. It's based on me being a servant yeah. because my first ministry is to be the servant to your people. Right. That's the greatest person in the body of Christ. Right. So I can't be so high minded that I'm no earthly good. Right. Ooh, I have to learn good. Repeat how. that. You so high minded, high -minded you're no you're earth, earth, that's good. you're no earthly good. Yeah. I have to be able to reach everybody right. on every level. But do you see with these millennials that there is a shift? We, I do. People it's a say major that shift. they don't believe it's a in God. Major they shift. love God. It's a major they shift. They just don't like they don't like the entertainment and, there you go. in the church. We've dealt with entertainment in the church. We've dealt with molestation in the church. We dealt with rape in the church. That's right. We dealt with abuse in the church. But the church don't want to deal with the they church. Don't, the, they don't want to deal. Don't get with me the 
things that are really going on, but right. that's what needs to be dealt that's with. That's what needs to be because dealt with. Because now the millennials are saying, you're not going to rape me. You probably raped my mom, but, but you're you not going to rape, rape me. me. Exactly. You probably molested my dad, but you're not going to molest there me. There you go. That's and right. these things are what the millennials are now saying. We're going to expose you we're, because exactly. we're not throwing anything under exposed. the moon. They should be exposed. Guess what we're doing How the church, church going to heal? How that's you going right. to heal the people? Right. But anyway, we got to wrap things up. You have got to come back to the show. I mean, you, you, you're just an amazing woman. And this went way too fast. Once again, how can the people get in contact with you? I am on social media. So you can find me at St. Gilstrap at Facebook, St. Gilstrap Ministries. I'm also on Instagram at Prophet at St. Gilstrap, Twitter at CGM underscore ministry, uh, CGM underscore ministries, as well as my website, which is St. Gilstrap dot Come, yeah, <laughs> you guys. That is our show for today. I am Donnie, your host on Donnie Jones Live. I cannot thank you enough for joining us. Please spread the word about us, share this video, and uh, like us, and um, just keep it moving, y'all. Let God use your mess and turn it into your message. Be blessed. Bye bye.